The first step to making a stem plot is to list all the values in order from least to greatest. I prefer to do this on the calculator because I tend to make mistakes when ordering large amounts of numbers. So here's what to do. Start by pressing the stat button, then press enter. This is our list. And in list one right here, we're gonna input all of the different bat lengths. Once you've input all the data, press the stat button again and go down to sort A. This is sort in ascending order. Press enter and it's gonna say, what do you want to sort? I'm gonna press second and one and that will put list one right there. Now when I press enter again, it says done. So if I press stat and edit again, here's list one, but now it's in order. Now I'm ready to make my stem plot. Stem plots have two parts, a stem and a leaf. We need to decide what we're gonna use for our stems. If we just use integers, it looks like the only stems we'll have are 29, 30, 31, and 32. That might be a little too condensed. So one thing we can do is we can split each integer into the lower half and upper half of its values. Here's what I mean. Let's start by writing 29 twice. Now the first 29 is gonna be for values from 29.0 to 29.4. And the second stem is gonna be values from 29.5 all the way to 29.9. That gives us more stems and doesn't condense the data as much. So here's all our stems. Now, looking at our data, our lowest value is 29.5. That doesn't go in the first 29, but in the second one. Now our next value is 30.1, and we actually have two of those. So in the first 30 stem, we're gonna put our two ones. Be really careful about your spacing. Sometimes, especially with ones, you put them really close together, and that can mess up your stem plot. The next value is 30.5 and then a 30.8. Both of those go into the second 30 stem. Now you can see why it was important to space the ones out just right. So all of these digits line up and these two digits line up. Now we have 31.0, 31.1, and 31.3, and 31.4. All of those go in the first 31 stem. For the second 31 stem, we have 31.5, 31.7, 31.8, another 31.9, and that's it. Now for the first 32 stem, it looks like we have 32.0, 32.1, 32.2, another 32.2, another 32.2, and then we have a 32.9, which is actually our last value, and that's gonna go in the second 32 stem. So that's our stem plot. Now no stem plot is complete without a key. So let's add a key here. So for the key, I just chose a value 31.5 and demonstrated how we could read the stem plot to translate it to a bat length. Now it says to describe the shape, center, and spread of the distribution. The shape of our distribution is unimodal because it has one peak and it's also skewed slightly in this direction. So we're gonna say a slight skew to the left which if we rotated our graph that way, it would be a skew to the left. Now to find our center, it's a good thing we already have all the data input into list one because we can quickly find some measures of center. To talk about the center, let's use our calculator again. If you press stat and you go over to calculate and one var stats, one variable statistics, it already has list one, which is where our data is input. So we'll go down to calculate and press enter. Now here's actually a bunch of useful information. This top line is our mean, so that's a measure of center. Also, if we scroll down, we see the median is 31.6. That's another measure of center. Looking through the data, 32.2 appeared three times, so that's our mode. So now we have three measures of center to talk about. So for center, we said the average bat length was 31.41 millimeters, and the median was 31.6 millimeters, and the mode was 32.2 millimeters. It's always good to add context whenever you can. So instead of just reporting these numbers, we actually reported them as bat lengths. 
Our calculator can also help us with spread. This number right here is the sample standard deviation. That's a measure of spread. But the one we're going to focus on today is the range. So the range is the maximum value minus the minimum value. So 32.9 minus 29.5. So that turns out to be 3.4 millimeters. So we're going to make a histogram by hand first, and then I'll show you how to do it on the calculator. The first step to making one by hand is to establish your classes. So from our stem plot, we had eight classes, and that's a good number to have. You want to have between, I'd say, six and 12 classes for a histogram. So eight's a great number. So let's write down all our class intervals. Now, technically speaking, it looks like these classes have gaps between them. Like, for example, from 29.4 to 29.5, there's actually values that exist in between them. So let's pretend this is for any bat length that has a 4 as the tenth digit there. So even if it was 29.49, we would still put it up in this class. But all of our bat lengths are rounded to the nearest tenth, so we don't really need to worry about that right now. So we're going to go through all the bat lengths, the 20 on top and the 40 on bottom, and tally up the frequencies. So now that we've tallied up all the frequencies, we're ready to set up our histogram. So our highest frequency was 16, so we need to make sure our vertical axis goes all the way up to at least 16. And for our horizontal axis, we need to go from 29 all the way up to 33. The other thing about our horizontal axis is it wouldn't make sense to start at zero since our minimum bat length was 29.2. But we don't want to be deceptive, so we're going to add a little break, this little squiggly thing in the horizontal axis. So our first class has a frequency of six, so we'll go up to six. Then our second class has a frequency of 15. For bats between 30 but under 30.5 millimeters, we had three. Then two in the next class, 16 in the next class, then 12, then five, and finally one. We have a little extra space on the right. That's okay. And we'll add color to make it a little easier to see. Now, when describing any distribution, you should use the acronym SOX to help you cover everything. SOX stands for shape, outliers, center, and spread. So here's what we said. We noticed that the lengths of bats have a bimodal distribution. There seems to be peaks between 29.5 and 30 millimeters and between 31 and 31.5 millimeters. These are our two peaks. We can see them in our graph. We can also see them in our table as peaks in the frequencies. So to figure out the measures of center, I put all the rest of the bat lengths into list one. So here's all the bat lengths listed in list one. If we press stat and we go over to calculate, choose one var stats. And it says, what do you want to run it on? List one. Frequency, just leave blank and press enter on calculate. Now here's some measures of center. The first one is the mean, 30.763 repeating. Now if we scroll down a little bit, we see the median is 31.1. Those are both excellent measures of center. For spread, let's talk about the range. The minimum bat length was 29.2 and the maximum was 32.9. So if we subtract those, we see the range is 3.7. Finally, the last thing to check is for outliers. A quick way to do this is to press second and y equals to get to the stat plot menu. Press enter on plot one and turn it on. Now go over to the fourth option, which is a modified box plot. It would reveal any outliers. In fact, this option down here allows you to set what symbol you want to use for outliers. I'm going to keep it on the default symbol. Now when you press zoom and nine, we get a box plot. Now since I don't see that symbol anywhere, I just see the whiskers go all the way to the end of the data. 
I can see there's no outliers in this data. Now let's talk about how to make the histogram with the graphing calculator. If you press second and Y equals to get to the stat plot menu, go back to plot one. This time, select the third option, which is histogram. When you press zoom and then the number nine, it shows you your histogram. Now this doesn't match this exactly. Let's figure out why not. If we push the trace button and we go over each of these, we can see what their classes are set to. For example, this class right here is set to about 31.8 to 32.3. So it's different than how we set up our classes, but we can customize this. If you push the window button, let's change the minimum to match our x-axis, which is at 29. Our maximum, let's match our x-axis as well. Now where it says x scale, we went by 0.5s. So let's do that on here too, 0.5. For Y minimum, we could set it equal to zero, and for Y maximum, it needs to go up to at least 16, but let's go to 20 so it matches our graph very closely. Now when we press graph, we can see our histogram matches the one we drew, and we can confirm this by pushing trace and seeing that our classes now match. Like this video? Check out my book, The Ultimate AP Statistics Practice Book. It's got a hundred problems, all with videos just like this. You can pick it up on Amazon.com.